Hello and welcome to this lesson on uh, Gypsy Jazz right hand technique. So this technique really gives you a um, great tone. And uh, we will see in a moment all the aspects of this technique. But yeah, it's designed to give a great tone and that's, that should be the reason why you choose to adopt a, a technique or the other. The tone and the sound that you get from your guitar. So uh, to get started, one uh, first thing you want to have a look at is your right arm. So your right arm should be embracing the guitar, so resting on the right hand side of your guitar. Of course, by the way, I'm right handed. So if you are left handed, every time I say right, it means left for you. And every time I say left, it means right for you. So you, with your right hand uh, arm, you are embracing the guitar and resting it on the body of the guitar so that you can be as relaxed as possible here. You can have no tension uh, whatsoever. And all the work comes from the wrist here. In the wrist, you have a slight curve. So you're going to have a slight curve there. And another rule is that every downstroke has to be a rest stroke, which means every time you hit the strings, the pick uh, with downstrokes, the pick will rest on the string below. See, it's resting on the string below. I'm, I'm sort of using gravity to make that happen. So every rest stroke is um, a down stroke. The other rule is um, every time you change string, it has to be a down stroke. Which of course doesn't give us many problems if we're going in this direction. For example, if I'm playing any sort of scale going down, I'm going to end up with a down, up, down, and then down again because I'm changing string. Down, up down and then down again up down then I'm changing string and down again up then changing string means down easy enough every time you change string it has to be a down stroke the problem comes when you're going the other way around when you when you're going from the first string up to the top one because especially when I have an odd number of notes per string I'm gonna end up with a lot of double down strokes for example, down, up, down. Then if I want to move up to the next string above, I'm going to have to start with a down stroke again because I cha I, I'm changing string. So down, up, down, and then changing means I'm going to end up with a double down. Down, up, down, down. And, and, and that's really the hard thing about this um, technique is all those double down strokes. exercise today is designed to make you work on these downstrokes and develop your right hand technique. It's a lick uh, that we can use on um, a minor 5-1 on, on the E7 chord and E minor. So it's based on two bars in E7. And then resolving on A minor. We find this in many tunes. In, I'm going to use minor swing as an example. So I'll play it a couple of times for you and then I'll show you how to play it. So it's designed to make you work on those down strokes, on those double down strokes, and that's why we have three notes per string. The lick starts on string th on, uh, 2 on fret 3. And you're going to play 3, 5, 6. Then move up a string and play 4, 5, 7. Then move up a string again and play 6, 7, 9. Then move up a string again and play 6, 7, 9 one more time. Excuse me, uh, 7, 8, 10. And then move up a string and play. So it starts on 3, which is a D note, is the flat 7 of E, 7. So D, E, F, with down, up, down. Remember
remember each downstroke is has to be a rest stroke. Then move up a string and play four, five, seven, which is uh, B, C, and D. So the fifth, the sharp five, and the flat seven of the uh, of E seven. again and play 6, 7, 9, which is the major 3rd, the 4th and the 5th, so G sharp, A and B, then move up again, 7, 8, 10, and one more time, on the top string and play 7, 8, 10, then 7, 8, 7, 6, 5. So whenever you're playing on the same string, you are welcome to keep alternating down and up strokes. But again, the focus of this exercise, which will work wonders on your right hand technique, is down, up, down, and then down again. At first, these things can feel really daunting to practice and really hard, really. Because, especially because of those double down strokes, down, up, down, down. But then we practice and with time, like everything, um, it will get easier and easier and it will become second nature. Then so one more time uh, a bit slower. sounds on, um, on on minor swing so two bars of a minor and here on the e7 one more time Practice it. Um, you could practice jamming on the minor swing backing track. So on A minor you can just do your thing. On D minor you could just, just do your thing. And when it comes the E7 part into the A minor, you could play that, that lick. I recommend practicing to either a metronome or a backing track. Uh, a backing track is basically the same as using a metronome somehow, but it also makes it a bit more musical to practice. Be patient with this technique, it takes uh, quite a lot of time to master, but then once you master it, it's going to be very rewarding because you're going to get a great sound with it and a great tone. So have fun with your practice and I will see you next week with a new video.